I, I, I do want to emphasize the, the long history that Pennsylvania has with oil and gas oil development for a couple of important points. One, with this long history, we, we are familiar with the impacts that are associated with oil and gas oil development. We've actually seen some of the, if you've ever seen some of the old pictures of, of old oil and gas oil sites in Pennsylvania, there's, there aren't any trees. They, they cut all the trees down for, for derricks. Uh, they were discharging brine right onto the ground, killing everything. Streams were being heavily impacted. You don't see that here today now. We've got 121, oh, excuse me, 122,000 active wells in Pennsylvania right now. And all, all through the western, western uh, and northwestern parts of, of the state. Uh, we actually estimate that over 350,000 wells have been built in Pennsylvania since uh, Edward Frank filled his first one. So with all of this history, uh, I think we have, we are equipped to, to deal with uh, Marcellus Shale well. And when I'm talking to folks about the Marcellus, they, they try to point out some of its unique characteristics. Well, Marcellus just is different than all of these other wells. It's, it's the deepest, it, these are the deepest wells we have in the state. Well, that's actually not true. We have over 11,000 uh, permitted deeper wells in the Commonwealth. We've got the entire statute devoted to regulating those wells. Uh, some of the other things they say, that, well, it's horizontal drilling. Horizontal drilling is what makes these wells uh, absolutely unique. Well, actually, we have coal bed methane wells in Pennsylvania as well, and those rely on horizontal drilling. Uh, drilling. Those were around for, for years uh, before the Marcellus uh, shale industry came to town. It's, it's the fracking. The fracking is what makes Marcellus shale different than all other wells in Pennsylvania. Well, actually, fracking's been, the first commercial frack job occurred in 1948. There's been about a million wells across the country that have been hydraulically fractured. It's been standard operating procedure in Pennsylvania since since the, uh, the 50s and basically since the 80s and 90s, almost 100% of the wells built in Pennsylvania have been hydraulically fractured using the same chemicals that are being used uh, with the Marcellus uh, today. So, you know, what is it about Marcellus? Well, it, this is a significantly bigger play, bigger industry than anything we've seen here. The Marcellus shale well building is, is Exploded isn't the right word, but because it's only 2,000 miles, we saw an exponentially increasing growth. Um, at the, at the, almost the end of April, we had 854 well permits issued. We have received 1,156 Marcellus permits to date, so there's a difference between received and permitted. The most important piece of well construction is to prevent the migration of gas, oil, brine, other produced fluids into fresh groundwater. Can't do that without properly casing cement as well. I'll tell you that the Marcellus operators have been building their wells that exceed our current regulatory standards. They're building their wells in a manner that exceeds the standards that we've we've actually proposed here in, in many respects. Uh, where this is largely a process of pulling in some of our traditional operators, moving them in into this century's practices. But it, oh, five million gallons sounds like a lot of water, but um, a scrubber on a coal-fired power plant needs five million gallons a day to operate. A cooling tower on a nuclear power plant needs 40 million gallons a day to operate. So while five million gallons sounds like a lot, in the overall scheme of things, it's not. And in fact, this industry at its peak, the Susquehanna River Basin Commission estimates it will be using less water than our golf courses and ski resorts. It's gonna use less water than recreation. So while, just a note about fracking. First of all, uh, I, I mentioned that we've standard operating procedure in Pennsylvania, and it's important to point out that we've never seen an impact to fresh groundwater directly from fracking. We've never seen any impact basically from a frack propagating itself up into fresh groundwater. And, and here's, here's how I know. Um, the water that's produced from, from wells is extremely salty. Some Marcellus wells can produce water that's 10 times saltier than seawater. Seawater is around 30,000 milligrams per liter of salt. We've seen over 300,000 milligrams per liter. It's going to, if, if there was fracturing of the, of the producing formations that was caused of having a direct communication with the groundwater, the first thing you would notice is the salt content in the drinking water supply. It's never happened. Uh, after a million times across the, com across the country, no one's ever documented drinking water wells that have actually sh sh uh, shown to have been impacted by fracturing. But a lot of folks, um, relate the situation to dimming to a fracking problem. And I just want to make sure everyone's clear on this, that, that it isn't. Um, what happened in Dimmick um, was that the company was drilling in the Marcellus, 
they encounter the shallow gap producing formation around 1,500 feet, 1,800 feet deep, which is common in, in, in this area of Pennsylvania. They didn't do a good job of cementing that off. Now you have the communication pathway the outside of the well up and into fresh groundwater, and that's what happened. We're making them plug those wells, piercing this, the casing at the, those producing formations, squeezing cement in that zone to, to effectively uh, seal off the formation. It wasn't a fracking problem. If it was a drilling problem, there's no fracking fluids in those people's drinking water wells. We tested it numerous times. Uh, you're clearly, the expansion of uh, the oil and gas industry uh, is going to require greater regulatory greater oversight. The question is, how many new employees is DEP hired to oversee uh, gas drilling? Well, I should I actually should have mentioned this is another thing that we saw about this industry coming. One of the one of the first things we did was raise our permit fees. You know, today. But what that's actually done is it's insulated the Bureau of Oil and Gas uh, from the, the layoffs that would be, be faced last year and it sounds like we're going to face again this year. Uh, so instead of decreasing our size, we hired 37 more people last year. We're in the process of hiring 68 more people this year. That's going to basically double the size of, of the number of people overseeing the industry to 193 of people. So is that enough? How many instructors? About three quarters of the people that we have working for us are engaged in overseeing the industry uh, in one inspection form or another. Uh, whether they're a water quality specialist or a water inspector or, or, um, or a geologist. Um, just by comparison, I was at this conference that uh, the professor mentioned that I was at on Monday. I was on the table with the, um, the director of Colorado's oil and gas program. In Colorado, a big state, it's bigger than Pennsylvania, probably twice the state. And they have well drilling in all four corners. Well, we only have well drilling in all four they have 75 people working for them. So we've got more than double the number of people overseeing this industry in Pennsylvania. No wells, I mean, I'm assuming when they say how many wells have, has damaged and tracked and damaged, and you're referring to how many drinking water wells.